everybody, it's me, Margaret, and I'm here with an object to talk about. It's not a finished project. It is a work in progress, but really like it. It's called the Triangle Baby Blanket, I think. Triangles Baby Blanket um, from Made by Mariana, and I will put that link in the description box below. I'm not sure if you can see the triangles in this, so I'll also put a picture of what it's supposed to look like so that you can see it better. When I look at the viewfinder, all I can see are columns, but when I edit, I'll be able to tell if you can see what it's supposed to look like. But this is a fun little blanket. It's free. The pattern is free. Of course, I'm making it more for a doll than I would be for a baby. But um, basically, you're repeating six rows over and over again, six different rows. And it comes out with these triangle effects in it. So I really like it. And the yarn I'm using is Gloria by Cannon. This is some of that Big Lots yarn that I had a million of. I believe this one was a dollar a skein. Yep, says it on here, a dollar a skein. I have plenty of this type of stuff left. And it's sort of a DK weight. It's all acrylic, but it's a great yarn. I really enjoy working with it. So, so what if it was only a dollar? So this is a maroon color one because I'm celebrating Mississippi State right now, whose colors are maroon and white. But I'm really proud of myself. It's coming out pretty well. Strangely, I'm into doing a longer project right now uh, than just hats. So I purposely sought out something like this. And you want to see that I really do take advantage of every helpful hint. And Erin taught me this. Every time you do a repeat on a row when you're knitting, I just mark it like this so that I know that I have completed every stitch in the repeat. And it's, it just makes it a little bit easier, um, especially because I was trying to watch ballet <laughs> while I was knitting. And those two activities don't really go together <laughs> because ballet is meant for you to keep your eyes on the screen, right? And unfortunately, I can't knit and watch ballet at the same time. So I'll have to save this activity for other shows. I've made some masks and I like these because of the way they adhere to your face. Obviously, I can't talk with this on, so I'll have to take it off. I made this style mask and I like it because it does conform to your face so you don't have a lot of um, uh, holes and all, getting extra air that's not coming through the filter. This is another reason why I chose this style mask. This fits over the top of your head and this fits down at the nape of your neck right there. And so you don't have it, the ear kind that pull on your ears and that was going to be bothersome to me. I didn't like that. This pattern is by Mimi G. Actually, there's lots of patterns like this, but Mimi G has a video tutorial on this if you need it, and I'll link it below. But uh, yeah, I purposely chose this pattern because it doesn't go behind the ears and because it's very fitted on the face. So um, this is what I made for friends and family. I did not get to do a whole lot for hospital donations and things like that because I, the move. You know, I just didn't have the opportunity, don't have all my supplies handy. Things are still in boxes. So, um, but I do have a couple of things I want to say about these masks. First involves sewing them. A common sewing task is to turn under an edge by one quarter inch, as I'm doing here in these face masks. I usually try to eyeball it, but I find I have a heavy eyeball, so to speak, yet I'm too lazy to pull out a ruler every time. So here's my solution. I used a fine tip marker, like a Sharpie, to draw lines right on my ironing board cover, one quarter inch apart. Now these particular instructions had me turn under the edge and then fold over another three quarters of an inch. So, because I have multiple lines, I just scoot the first folded edge up to the top and fold down three quarters of an inch and press. 
Now I do have one inch marks across the top, which does come in handy on occasion, but not nearly as much as that good old one quarter inch marking. Now I had first looked into buying one of these ironing board covers that has the marks already on them, but they didn't have what I wanted. The one quarter markings were only on these ruler things and I wanted a series of horizontal lines more like these one inch grids. Quilters would probably love these, but I don't quilt. Furthermore, the reviews and questions indicated to me that it was a bear to put on the ironing board. So I saved my money and just got exactly what I needed with a sharpie, a ruler, and five minutes of my time. Note that one commenter says she loves it for blocking her crochet, but she must do only really small projects and block very few at a time. I prefer these blocking mats and I'll link all these products below in case you want to do your own research. And second are some um, what I thought was common sense tips about how to handle and care for these masks, but you know, a, a lot of people aren't germaphobes like I am. That's what Thomas calls me, a germaphobe. Obviously, when you're wearing a mask, what you're doing is trying to catch some of the microorganisms coming from this direction as you're breathing in, right? So if you do catch some of them, and remember that this is not medical grade, so some of the microorganisms can easily slip through, you will catch some, and that's why they're telling you that it's better to have something than nothing. But it's very important to understand that as you're breathing in and sucking air this way, pulling in the possibly tainted air this way, the microorganisms, if caught, will be on the outside of this mask. Therefore, don't be touching the outside and then touching your face or something like that. Because that should be kind of, I thought it was common sense. However, we were watching the news the other day and they had some B-roll going on while they were talking about masks, just showing people around town wearing their masks. And this wasn't the point of what they were talking about, but I just happened to observe this man takes his mask down, wipes his nose with the palm of his hand like this, and then puts his mask back up. Now, one thing, he just could possibly have infected himself, right, by putting his hand on his face. And two, now he could possibly infect other people if he were to be a carrier of this virus. So now he's got you know, his germs or whatever, he's gonna put them on the door handles or whatever he touches next. Obviously, if you have to take it down to, or for whatever reason, you, know, you would use, say, your shirt or anything that's not the hands that you're about to be touching things with. Or obviously, your hands have been touching things, so you don't wanna put it in your face and <laughs> you know, infect yourself. Why bother with the mask? So another thing that's really important is when you come home and you take this off, try not to touch the outside as much as possible, but go straight to the laundry room. And you want to wash and dry this because dry heat, those temperatures, the two combinations of the washing with the soap and everything and then putting it into the dryer will help to kill some of those microorganisms and that's what we're going for. If you don't have a dryer, I would recommend putting it outside in the heat you know, in the sunshine and just leaving it there for several days. Therefore, everybody in your family would need to have more than one. So um, that's just some basic care facts to keep yourself safe. Oh wait, another trick that I heard is to take some hydrogen peroxide in a spray bottle and you can spray the outside of it and let it air dry. I think I would spray the inside as well because think about all the moisture coming from your body as you're breathing and exhaling through it. So me, I wash it, dry it, you know, every time. So. Well, actually, that's not true. I haven't been anywhere, so I haven't had to wear it. Tucker goes and runs all the errands, goes to the grocery shopping or whatever, and he, we wash his. He has two, and we just kind of alternate them like that. So um, we're trying to keep me from being exposed because supposedly I have a, a compromised immune system, and we don't want to chance it. So I'm sitting out here editing this video and I realized I forgot to point out something really important. I have seen a lot of these crochet face mask patterns going around and I don't tend to think that those are going to offer a whole lot of protection. There's no way that you could actually get a weave tight enough on 
the crochet mask to mimic that of cotton weave, cotton woven fabric. And they're telling us that you need two layers of cotton woven fabric. Now I know that some people are putting a layer of cotton behind the, the crochet and I'm sure that helps to some extent, but you still don't have that double thickness of that fabric there. I guess you could put a double thickness there, but why not just go ahead and make yourself a mask because the crochet portion is probably not helping you very much at all. As a matter of fact, most of the sewn masks use uh, two layers of fabric, but also they have um, a little pocket for you to put a third layer of, you know, HEPA vacuum filter or um, even a coffee filter. And even if you don't have a pocket in those sewn masks, like the one I did, for example, that I don't have out here, you could just pop a coffee filter in between that for an added protection on there. But I, I really don't think there's any way that a crochet version of this mask is going to offer much protection at all. But I just wanted to throw it out there to do your research, understand how small small bacteria and viruses are before you take the time to uh, crochet one of those things. On the other hand, these little things are excellent accessories to crochet. Masks designed to be looped over the ears can be bothersome, so this little gadget is worn on the back of the head and the ear loops are attached to the buttons. Genius! <laughs> So I'm doing this rather unusual activity and it occurred to me that you may be interested in what I'm doing. We are having a hard time getting all our usual product, products. We normally get mixed nuts without peanuts um, and they don't have a bunch of salt on them. That We get them from Costco. However, Costco has been backed up with far too many people so we're not going to Costco. So Tucker picked these up at Kroger and they are incredibly too salty. We are not used to consuming this much salt. So what I have done is first I put them in this and tried to shake the salt out on Tucker's suggestion, but I knew that wasn't gonna work. Um, so I had to revert to my old method, which is putting it in a nice clean towel. And I'm glad I chose a black towel so you could actually see a lot of the stuff coming off. So I've gone through two rounds of this process so far. I've gotten this much done. And keep in mind that this doesn't take off all the salt. It just kind of makes it a lighter salt version. So what I do next is dump this into the sink. And begin again. Oh look, still lots of salt. Okay, so you pour some out like this, and then you just kind of wipe it off. But there you go. Now the reason I don't pick it up and put it in there is because I don't want more salt dumping in there. So I will t do the painstaking task of this and of course you make sure your hands are very clean as you should whenever you handle any food product. So just like everybody, Nick Crate was affected by the shelter in place orders with the virus and everything and they were afraid they wouldn't be able to get out the printed booklet that comes in every Knit Crate with the patterns in it and everything. Because you know not everybody's at work. Uh, the, the printers, the everybody. So on the back of this postcard they provided links for us to download a digital version of the booklet which is great and also a coupon code for SOAK. If you have never used this I would highly recommend it. I have. This is basically a no rinse wash for your delicates which of course is what your hand knitted natural fiber yarn would be. I really like this stuff and it comes in a whole bunch of different uh, fragrances. So look that up. I never know how to pronounce this URU yarn by Knit Crate. It's called Sugared Sport. The colorway is diamond and it's 70% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 10% stellina. Sport weight 300 yards uh, or 100, 100 grams and machine wash gentle cycle lay flat to dry or of course you could use your soak to wash this. And 
tips from this penny pincher. If you're interested in subscribing to Knit Crate, check their website for new subscriber specials that may run from time to time. If you don't see one, use my code SHEEP20 for 20% off your first box. So never pay full price for that first box. And as you may imagine, sewing in this environment is not conducive to creativity. <laughs> I still have all these boxes that I have not unpacked and the reason why is because I came up here to do it and I got analysis paralysis. It was like where am I going to put all these things? So what I ended up doing is ordering an original scrap box. They're now changing their name to create room or I think that's what it was. I'll put it down below. But it's expensive, but it's a big giant piece of furniture that's designed specifically for crafters. And it's gonna go over here on this wall. Those pieces of furniture, I'm going to move somewhere else and get all these boxes out of the way and it's going to be delivered on Thursday. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm not sure if you can hear Thomas singing in the background or not, but call that ambiance. <laughs> Well, that's all I've got to talk about this week. Uh. <laughs> well, you used to be in my background dancing and throwing footballs and all kinds of stuff like that, so this is normal. So, um, thank you for the kind words about Thomas, by the way, and going to check out his YouTube channel. That was uh, a, a nice surprise. We appreciate that. But that's all I've got. Next week, hopefully, I'll be able to show you my uh, scrap box, that big piece of furniture that's, that's here and coming soon. And I'm eager to see what that's going to look like as I try to put it together. That will be quite the process. No, that's, let me correct that. I'm not putting it together. I paid the extra money to have it assembled. I think it comes in three parts. So we just have to basically put those three parts together and that's all. What I meant was setting it up that's going to be a challenge, figuring out where everything should go. But um, it makes the most sense because it can close up and that's what I'm going to do. So um, thanks for hanging out with me and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>